What is up people, DevSage here and in this video I'm going to be teaching you about view directives. In the last video we went over the basics of the view instance. In this video we're going to expand a little and talk about view directives. But first I want to quickly go over one thing we talked about in the last video which is this. Um, remember how we defined username here in our component and we were able to inject that username into our HTML using uh, these double curly braces well this username here this is just a regular JavaScript expression I mean so whenever you want to evaluate actual JavaScript in your HTML you just wrap that JavaScript with two sets of curly braces and view will automatically determine hey this is JavaScript there is a limit to what you can put in here though these curly braces can only accept one expression at a time um, so I can uh, you know you, you see that we can inject variables from our component but we can also just evaluate regular JavaScript I can put one plus one and that will evaluate to two over here as you can see um, I could do ternary operators I can do one less than two return true else false now return true as you can see um, there are limits to what you can do so I can't do this I can't do var a equals one this is a statement to see how it breaks the whole thing everything disappeared and I have an error in the console so if you can't evaluate statements they can only take in expressions so this is bad comment that out likewise I can't do flow control so I can't put an if okay uh, uh, return true I can't do this either this is bad it's bad um, but yeah um, so yeah there are limitations you can only put expressions you can only put one expression at a time but you know if you have any complex logic you really don't want to be putting that here on the front end if you have any complex logic really that logic is going to be handled by uh, view instances on the back end here or view components when we go over those uh, in a later video but yeah that's just a little bit about expressions really fast but now we can actually get into view directives so what is a directive a directive is a special attribute that you can use on HTML elements kinda like class or ID or style except view has its own set of attributes and they all start with the V dash prefix um, so what a directive does it applies certain effects to the DOM when its value changes so some examples of some directives are VHTML for example I'll actually do an example here so let's say I have a span and then let's say I want to I want to use VHTML what VHTML does is it takes in a JavaScript expression more than likely this expression is going to be a variable coming from your data and what you can do is you can say let's say I, I want to name this HTML and I want to inject actual HTML code into my um, into my HTML file my index HTML I can say let's let's just say uh, DevSage tutorials boom so now I have a property on my instance called HTML and I can inject that into my span here and as you can see dev says tutorials well you might say well dev why don't you just do something like this why don't you just put HTML well that's because this is strictly text interpolation so this is going to take that exact string that I typed in and it's going to render that just like how it is in the component 
Whereas if you did eight vhtml, that's going to say, okay, I'm going to evaluate this just like HTML. So another ex uh, directive is the um, if the if directive. Basically, this just controls uh, whether or not an element is displayed on the screen based off of some condition. So let's say I, I, I go back and I add an, uh, a new property on my data called uh, visible and I set it to true. And I go over here and let's say I have uh, an H3 and this H3 is going to have, um, I don't know, uh, uh, something random. I'm just going to put random. I can control whether or not I want to see this by putting V if and then this likewise takes in an expression I could just put false in here if I wanted to and it wouldn't display but we're actually going to be using that visible data from our component I mean our instance I keep saying component uh, we get to components later but these are just instances for now but yeah I can I can put that in here and right now it's set to true but I could easily go in on the back end and say well not back end but I can easily go in in my main JS file changes to false and it wouldn't display we also have the else if and we also have the else and you could probably imagine what those do um, basically you can just string more conditions on um, onto your if statement and then display different items um, based off of whether the conditions are false or not. So I can put H4 uh, V else uh, not random. And then one of these would display but not the other. So since visible is set to false right now, not random is displaying. But if I set it to true, random would display and not random would be uh, off the screen. So this works for single elements. What if I want to do, what if I want to this, what if I want mult to display multiple elements? What if I want to control multiple elements at the same time? So I can wrap these. Let's say I have, um, let's just say I have um, an H3 called one H3 with two. And I want to, either display both of these or I have an h3 with three and h3 or four so let's say I want to display either both of these or both of these well I can't put ifs on both of these right I mean I, I guess I, I could but what if I had a hundred elements I mean I would have to put ifs on all of those well no I don't actually I can just use the template tag I can wrap this template. I can wrap my uh, my HTML with templates, and I can put my if statements on my template. The if visible, the else. So right now I just have one and two because visible is set to true, and three and four are hidden. What does template do? Template actually doesn't render any HTML on the screen at all. It's specific. I believe it's specific to view. It doesn't actually render or add anything. This is strictly for con, uh, just um, creating blocks to tell view, hey, this information belongs to each other. I mean, these this group of information uh, just needs to be grouped together. There's nothing special about the HTML that it outputs or anything. So that's a little bit about directives themselves. Directives can actually take in arguments um, to further control how they behave. So an example of a directive that can accept an argument is the v bind directive. Uh, so what the v bind directive does is it takes a real HTML attribute like 
class or ID or style and it binds it to some value or some variable um, let me show you what I mean so let's say I have an h3 dev sage and I want to let's let's say a v bind and then this colon tells this tells view okay I'm passing an argument to this directive in this case the v bind directive takes in an HTML attribute for an argument so I'm gonna just give it a class and I'm gonna say equals and here I pass in some JavaScript expression that evaluates to something in this case let's go back to our view instance and let's make a a new property here and we're gonna inject that and use that as our class so I'm gonna just name this property red and then I'm gonna give it the value of red class let's say that and now we can take red here and pass this in because this is just a it's just the JavaScript expression it's gonna be evaluated so let's save that okay and let's actually inspect this and as you can see down here h3 class red class so yeah that's how the v bind argument works and you can pass in anything here you can pass in style or id height width whatever uh, the v bind argument the v bind directive takes in any valid html attribute for an argument okay so that's v bind uh, one other directive that's pretty popular that takes in an argument is the v on attribute. So v on basically just acts like an event listener. So let us say we have um, let's let's go back to our view instance and we're going to build a counter. So I'm going to add a property called count. I'm going to initialize it to be zero and then I'm going to come, come over here and I'm going to inject count into our view and we have zero and let's say we want to have a button down here button uh, and every time we click our button we want to add one so I'm going to name our button add one okay so how do we do that we can say v on and we're passing in an argument and we can pass in click and we set equals some JavaScript expression in this case we can actually increment count by one so we can say count plus plus because it, remember this is just JavaScript in here that's being evaluated and let's save that and let's actually click our button look at that one two three four five and yeah, the V on is binding the click event listener to this button. And when it's clicked, it evaluates whatever's in this, uh, whatever uh, expression is here. So in this case, it's count plus plus. It updates count. The HTML says, okay, well, view tells the HTML, okay, I've updated. So I need to update the view on the page, the VIEW. And I can pass in, you know, instead of click, we can pass in double click or hover or, you know, any, uh, any valid event listener. Um, one step further, directives can also have modifiers, which are special post fixes, meaning that they come after the directive that indicate, um, that they should be bound in some particular way for example uh, let's uh, let's go back up here let's change this back to click let's say I only want to um, let's say I only want to increment increment count on the first click I can add an event modifier or directive modifier once by using dot once after my argument here now what should happen is I should click on add one and it should increment the first time but when I click on it again it's not incrementing anymore once 
is a directive modifier. It, it, it tells the directive, okay, I want you to do this, this certain thing in this certain way. And there are a few other modifiers that I'm not necessarily going to go over. Just uh, be aware that they exist. And yeah, that was a little bit about view directives. If you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more tutorials, if you want to keep track of this series, I encourage you to subscribe and also hit that notification bell so that you can get notified whenever I upload. I'm trying to upload at least twice a week, so I'm trying to push these videos out for you guys. But uh, yeah, if you got any comments for me, leave them down in the comments. But other than that, peace.